Okay, last topic in uh, this beginning chapter of biology, chapter one, or just the scientific method chapter, are the characteristics of life. I have a little video clip here for you to look at. Um, so you can pause it here, go watch this video clip on what uh, is an organism, what uh, characteristics do organisms have, what shared characteristics. And then when you're finished, if you'll come back and at the bottom of your screen, if you'll click on note sheet. So you should probably pause here. Okay, welcome back. Here we are to our note sheet. So when you click on your note sheet, uh, you're going to get something that looks kind of like this. It's an outline and in this outline, uh, we'll be taking our notes on characteristics of life. There are some additional videos. Uh, that I'll ask you to look at, um, and even a Prezi that I'll ask you to um, to go to. Okay, the first characteristic of life is that all organisms are made of cells, and the cell is the basic unit of our organization. And when we're talking about our organization, we're talking about orderly structure. So our orderly structure. Uh, is simply this cells and then cells come together to make tissues tissues come together to make organs organs work together in organ systems and then your organ systems work together to make the organism now obviously some organisms are going to be more complicated than others um, some organisms are only single celled like this uh, uh, example here this is a prokaryote those are bacteria some organisms are going to be multicellular, so they're made of many cells, um, like this plant. Um, plants are made of multiple plant cells. Um, animals, animals are made of multiple plant cells as well. Now, if we look at this again, and here's an example uh, using a human, here we go from the cell, the smallest unit of life, so the smallest unit of our structure and our function, what we're made up of, how we function. Um, an example would be a nerve cell, which is a neuron. And then the tissue is a bunch of these neurons working together, so we call that nerve tissue. And then the organ is a bunch of tissues working together. So an organ in the nervous system is the brain. And then the organ system itself, uh, a bunch of organs working together. So I just mentioned that we are right now talking about the nervous system, but we could have easily went through the digestive system or the respiratory system. And then the organism are all of the organ systems that we have working together. So it makes us the human. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at, number two, is that all organisms reproduce. And in reproduction, we can talk about uh, two different types of reproduction. We can have sexual reproduction, and that's what we all know. Um, that's where we get uh, kittens from cats to produce new organisms, um, like a calf from a cow. Or it can be asexual reproduction. So remember what A means. It's without or not, so it's not sexual. So you can see the budding here of the hydra or this binary fission of amoeba and bacteria reproduce this way as well. Now, when you're talking about reproduction, something that's very important to know is your definition for a species. Now, a species is a group of organisms that can interbreed. So that means they can breed with each other. They can breed amongst other members of their species and produce fertile offspring. So that means it's a successful sexual reproduction. So when it comes to definition for a species, it's all about the ability to successfully reproduce, which means that their offspring are able to then go on and have more offspring. So that's successful sexual reproduction. But I do have an additional prezi that I'll have you look at and uh, go through a little bit about uh, advantages and disadvantages of sexual versus asexual reproduction and some examples. So I'll go to that. Uh, in just a minute and, and let you kind of take a little look-see um, at that. But this is what we're used to is um, like cats and dogs and humans and cows is sexual reproduction where we have two genetically unique parents 
that make offspring that are genetically unique from each other and genetically unique uh, to the parents. Now, asexual reproduction, you're going to get organisms that are identical to the parents. Now, I mentioned that when it comes to the definition of species, and this is something you might encounter on a standardized test, it's, it's all about reproduction. It's not that they have the, the same color, that they eat the same thing. It's all about successful reproduction. But I know you probably have seen hybrids. So I'm going to take you to this website, and we'll just kind of play around with this just a little bit. Hybrids, uh, you've probably seen these. Uh, there's the liger, the male lion, and the female tiger. And it could be a tigon. It just depends on who's the male and who's the female, if it's a lion or a tiger. Um, there you can see this picture. And um, don't know if I would quite be there in her position since that liger could probably uh, bite her head in one shot. There's the tigon. So the male is a tiger and the female is a lion. So, um, yeah, we can see kind of the difference there. Still, it's the size of like a car. A zonkey, and it can have different variations of the name, just like the liger can. Uh, so one parent is a zebra and the other is a donkey. So this one kind of sort of looks like a, a donkey with some um, zebra striped stockings on. A jaglion, male jaguar and female lion. A uh, goat sheep, jeep. A growler bear, polar bear, a brown bear. A koi wolf, coyote and a wolf. A zebroid. So let's say that you're not using a donkey. Um, the different names could vary for this. It could be a Z-donk, um, a Hebra. So there's a lot of different names um, for these. But in all these cases, even though they're very, very interesting to look at, they're sterile. So this very interesting striped-looking horse creature um, was a product of two different species, a zebra and some horse um, and it's not going to be able to have offspring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you over to your notes and kind of show you where you'll go. So somewhere on your note sheet up close to the top you'll see reproduce link to Prezi and Google slide notes. So please click on that. Now, when you click on these, make sure that you're clicking on the link and not just on this little picture, which is a preview. And then once you get there, you do have a presentation. And in this presentation, you'll go through asexual reproduction in a Prezi, and then you'll take some notes. And with these notes, uh, there are text boxes, so you can go and type in. Don't type like that. That's ridiculous. And with the Prezi's, if you've never used a Prezi before, we'll look at it. It's easy. It's just kind of like going through one of these Google slide presentations, except for I like to mix it up a bit every once in a while. Why not? So with asexual reproduction, you click on this, and it's going to show you everything that you're going to be looking at. Now, you can click on these individually, and it takes you in there. Or you can click on this little next arrow. If I want to go back in there again, go back in, disadvantages, arrow, fragmentation, arrow, arrow. I can go through all of them just like that. Um, so, what you'll do as you go through these is you'll take some notes about them uh, on your note sheet. And again, text boxes are provided to you. You just got to click in there. 
And then there's the same thing for sexual reproduction. So you click on it. It's another Prezi little presentation. Okay, it looks like there's a little bit of techni technical difficulties. I will fix it. But when you click on sexual reproduction, it will take you to the sexual reproduction notes. Promise. And then again, text boxes. So let's take a little time and go through this Prezi, and then we'll come back to the characteristics of life.